Well, hello everybody. My name is Justin Crozier. I am a uh, criminal defense attorney here in Kansas City and uh, wanted to talk with you folks for a little bit about a uh, few issues that we've got. Um, let me make sure my audio is working the way that I want it to. All right, it looks like everything's good. Um, so, uh, what I wanted to talk with you about today was uh, probation. I want to talk about sentencing and I wanted to talk about, um, I guess, parole a little bit about how these things happen. So, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is probation. There's essentially two different kinds of probation uh, that we're working with. Uh, the first one is called, at least here in Missouri, these are the things that we have. Um, that We've got SIS probation and we have SES probation. Um, and I'll explain those in a second. So the, then you've got on the other side of things, uh, occasionally you've got something like uh, Kansas City Municipal Court does something called diversion, which is not exactly probation, but it, it's, it's close enough that, that we're going to talk about it. So SIS probation. Uh, SIS probation means suspended imposition of sentence. Um, and basically what that means is that you you're pleading guilty to something and they've not yet decided on what your sentence is going to be uh so if we're talking about a a felony uh let's let's say a class c felony class c felony means that you're looking at potentially one to seven years uh if you have an sis probation then what they do is they say all right we're gonna put you on uh a few years of probation it's gonna be c felony so maybe we're gonna put you on three years of probation maybe five years of probation uh you're not gonna necessarily go to jail at all during that time and we don't have a sentence for you if you screw up so as long as you go and you make your probation you do everything you're supposed to you uh keep up with your uh your probation officer you go and do the classes they want you to take you you know keep your head down you do what you're supposed to do um you're never going to do any time in jail uh you're just gonna walk it down you're gonna be in good shape happy guy no problem at all now, if you screw up, then the judge is going to decide if they revoke. If they revoke your probation, then now they're going to talk about your sentence. You know, are you going to do a year? Are you going to do two years? Are you going to whatever it happens to be? Uh, so then that's that's the first gun, which is the the best probation you can get outside of diversion, which again we'll talk about in a second. Because once your SIS probation is done, what that means is that you uh, you're, you're just off your record. They never sentenced you. So you don't actually have the crime on your record. Uh, some, uh, I've, I've had some clients that have been confused by that because they think that means a prosecutor can't use that against them later. They say, well, I, I completed my SIS probation. It's not on my record, so I should be in good shape. You know, I, no one should know anything about this. No one should talk about it. Good to go. And that's not exactly how it works. A, a prosecutor is going to have a record of the fact that you were on probation. They're going to know that you were charged. They're going to know that you pled guilty. So if, you know, say that you get a DWI and you do an SIS probation on your first time DWI uh, and you, you go down your, uh, your SIS, totally fine. Usually it's a two-year probation uh, for a lot of DWIs. Then you go four years later, you get another DWI. Well, the prosecutor knows about the first one. They're not just going to act like it never happened. They're probably going to hold you to a higher standard at that point. And if you do another one, then now you're talking about a felony. Three DWIs turns into a felony. Uh, and there's not a whole lot that we can do about that. We, we can try and deal with it as best we can, but um, it's, uh, it, you're going you're gonna to be looking at a, a felony, most likely. So that's SIS. Uh, if it goes well, then... It's off your record, at least as far as background checks go. Um, in regards to uh, the other one, SES probation, that means that you're you're on probation. Again, probably not doing jail time, though sometimes you've got uh, shock time uh, or callback. Uh, shock time means that they're going to put you in for a little bit of time, 30 days, 60 days, 120, 180, something like that. Um, and you're gonna be you're gonna be in custody. You're gonna be in jail. You're gonna be someplace for a while. But then when you're done with that, you're on probation, so you don't have to serve the entire term. And if you're looking at a Class C felony, again, you know, up to seven years, then no, that's not bad. Uh, you know, you do 60 days on it. No time after that, you finish your probation, and you didn't have to do any more time than that. 
And SES probation does stay on your record. If it's a felony, you're now a felon. You've pled guilty to a felony. And that's not ideal, but in the scheme of things, if you, know, if you have a job, if you've got a family, uh, certainly you don't want to be a felon, but you also don't want to be in jail for three or four or five or ten years, depending on what it is that we're talking about. So the uh, so that's what an SES is. They sentence you then. Oh, and that stands for suspended execution of sentence. So they're they're waiting until you complete your probation to execute your sentence. So you're not going to go to jail unless you screw up along the way. Um, then uh, now I want to talk for a second about about diversion. Diversion is kind of an informal probation. Uh, in, in Kansas, they offer a little bit more. They offer it on a lot of stuff in Kansas. In Missouri, they, most places don't do diversion. Um, what, what diversion does is they basically say, all right, you know, you're going to pay a little extra fee. You're going to um, come in. We're going to, you know, you're going to try to stay out of trouble for six months, okay? Uh, it's usually for minor stuff. Um, like, uh, I know in Kansas City, they do it for... Um, solicitation of a prostitute they do it for some possession charges they do it for for a few things they'll usually want you to take a class uh, like they would on an SIS probation they want you to um, go and you know pay an extra fine uh, you may have to do community service there's a few things that you may have to do along with your diversion so it's very similar to probation in that regard um, the difference is that once it's done they, they just pull it right off. You usually are not going to get supervised. Uh, it's usually for a shorter period of time, like six months rather than three years or, or two years or five years, you know, uh, all of the various times that you could get on a regular probation. So diversion is pretty good if you can get it, but most places, like I said, don't offer it. Um, I, I, mo I mostly practice in the Kansas City area. Um, I make it out to Lafayette County. I make it out to, you know, Marshall, Missouri, out in Saline County. Um, uh, Warrensburg, uh, but I don't make it all the way to the other side of the state, like out in St. Louis or anything. So I can't tell you what they do out there. I just, I don't know. Most of the time, if you're going to find diversion or something similar, that's going to be at a municipal court. That's going to be at your low level stuff. Uh, you're usually only going to find that on misdemeanor charges. I don't know of anybody, at least in Missouri, that offers it on a felony charge. I don't know if they used to and if they just stopped or maybe they will again, but at the moment, I don't really see it. The other thing I wanted to talk about was, was sentencing. So during a misdemeanor, usually you have your sentencing occur when you, when you plead guilty. So, um, or when you've had your trial. So you'll, you'll go in, you'll do your trial, you'll plead guilty, you'll open plea to the judge, which we can talk about all that stuff some other time, but the, the idea is that you're you're guilty, okay? Now, oh no, now what are you going to do? Um, you got to get sentenced. So what is your sentence going to be? Sometimes that's the SIS probation, SES probation. Um, sometimes it's, you know, whatever, diversion or, or going to jail. Uh, or a fine and nothing, uh, depending on the charge. On a felony, what you're going to find is that you'll you'll usually have your, your guilty plea done then, and then they're going to set out a ways for your uh, your sentencing to find out what what you're actually going to have to do, the idea is that most of the time you go and you do a uh, a sentencing report. So you meet with somebody at probation office, talk with you a little bit, ask some questions. They have a pee in a cup. Uh, they find out, you know, hey, what have you been doing? You've been, you know, uh, doing meth. You've been smoking pot. You've been whatever it happens to be. And then when that is done, they give that to the judge, they give it to the prosecutor, they give it to me, if I'm your attorney, and we, uh, we then go over that, and I have the opportunity to argue for what I believe you should get. You know, what, what, what is the in your best interest? Um, the judge will, a lot of times, they're going to, to follow what the report is, unless you've got a plea bargain already in place. If you have a plea bargain, then they will, unless the, the plea that you've come up with is really out of line with what the sentencing report says. Like if the prosecutor, you know, agrees to like a day in jail and a $3 fine and uh, it turns out that you've, you know, you murdered somebody, uh, the judge may say, yeah, it's a little light. I don't know about this. Uh, I think, I think maybe we're going to come down a little harder on you. Um, so that's what the sentencing report does. 
And it can happen sometimes a, a month or even two months or more later, depending. Uh, it's an opportunity for people. If you, if you believe that you're going to be going to, uh, into prison or jail, it gives you a chance to uh, go and talk with some people, get some things set up, hopefully make some plans so that if you've got kids or something like that, um, that, you can, that you can have everything taken care of, which, which is good. It's what you want. Um, I mean, those, those are the big, the big blocks. I, I could talk probably more about sentencing specifically because there is, um, there, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, it's, it, it's not quite as extensive as another trial, but you can put on evidence. Uh, you can put on evidence that couldn't even come in a trial. Both sides can. The prosecutor could put things in they couldn't bring in during trial. The defense can bring things in that they couldn't bring in during trial to, to help you. You know, some things even hearsay, um, which it's a whole other ball of wax. But uh, sentencing, it's a, it's a big deal. And you do want to make sure that even if you're, um, that everything is, is working right, you know, that they are, that you've got all the information in that you need. And it's a, uh, it, it's a, it's a big thing that you want to make sure it's taken as close care of as your trial is. Both of these are very important to get you the best result possible. Uh, all right, so if you've got any questions, if there's anything you need, um, you know, go on my Facebook page, ask me some questions, and I'm happy to get back with you folks. Um, I've, I've had a few people send some things in, and if you, uh, if you want, uh, if you'd like me to answer your question online, then I'm, I'm happy to do so, and I'll get back with you, and we can, we can talk about it. Um, anything you need, please give me a call. I'm happy to help you out, and uh, good luck out there. Thank you for watching.